Well, thank you and welcome back to this uh, third hour of our 24 hours of reality and the third reason to be hopeful that we are solving the climate crisis and that we can seize the opportunity. So in this hour, uh, we want to address a question that people have had on their minds for some time when it comes to renewable energy. I used to hear all the time when someone would say, what about solar energy? And the answer would often be, yeah, it's pretty good. The problem is, though, you need a lot better and more affordable batteries. Well, imagine this, a cheap source of nearly unlimited electricity on demand whenever you want it. That is the end result. And what you get when you combine unlimited amounts of solar and wind electricity with affordable and efficient energy storage technology. That question that I referred to where people say, well, it would be good, but don't we need better and more affordable batteries? Well, fortunately, we are now seeing this happen. And it's happening very fast. The rapid advances in solar and wind energy are truly astonishing and do potentially give us the ability to produce unlimited amounts of clean electricity. But it is just as important, along with clean energy generation, to have an ability to store that electricity when the wind isn't blowing, when the sun uh, isn't shining. And that's why the ongoing dramatic and rapid improvements in energy storage, including battery technology, are absolutely critical to our sustainable future. So let's take a look at some of the surprising facts that have become clear to us with new advances in technology just in the last uh, few years. Again, remarkable progress is being made in energy storage. Look at the price of consumer lithium ion batteries. They've become very common uh, in, in recent years. In less than 20 years, the cost has fallen almost 100%, 90% uh, in less than 20 years. And the kinds of batteries that are used in electric cars and hybrid cars, partly because the demand for these vehicles has been growing and you get this virtuous cycle where the more units are produced, the more they learn how to reduce the cost and take advantage of the economies of scale. We have seen uh, in just 14 years, the cost go from $1,600 to $200. And uh, there are businesses now that are quoting prices even lower than the ones that are projected on this chart for 2020. So it's extremely encouraging. And talk about the economies of scale. You may have read in the news just last week uh, that Elon Musk, the CEO of the electric car company Tesla, uh, has announced a new gigafactory. It's going to be located uh, in Nevada. The folks out there are really happy about that. That's going to produce a $100 uh, per kilowatt hour battery pack uh, within uh, six years or less. Uh, and it will be powered by local renewables, solar and wind. Nevada is one of the great leaders in the United States uh, on renewable technology. Uh, so again, if you read and listen to what the bankers and the financial institutions who, uh, whose business it is to try to keep track of all these developments uh, in the business world, uh, here City says, new technologies in energy storage are going to remove more of that cost barrier that has been an impediment to the more rapid adoption of solar electricity and at the same time speed up the adoption of electric vehicles and we'll talk about them uh, a little bit more in a, uh, an upcoming hour. But all over the world we're now seeing these business uh, announcements and industry announcements in, in Germany. Uh, a boom in solar energy storage. Uh, uh, sun power to add storage to solar in new homes. In Finland, new storage systems. These headlines are, are popping out all over the world. Uh, the storage market has already risen to 50 
billion dollars. New initiatives for energy storage uh, development. Uh, storage shines in the solar sector. This is a business revolution and a technology revolution. Japan is using these solar batteries. In Germany, uh, lithium ion uh, energy storage. This is another German uh, storage uh, facility. And some countries, like Japan, are now intelligently and actively helping homeowners and businesses to finance the battery storage systems along with the, the solar panels on their rooftops. It only makes good sense. Uh, we're also uh, seeing this uh, happen in, in Germany. So as the interest in solar electricity and wind power has increased, naturally there has been a huge amount of new attention being paid to energy storage. Now, when you combine the two, what you get is the ability for homeowners and businesses, not too long from now, some have already done it, to go off the grid so that they're independent of utilities and so they don't have to pay that monthly bill uh, uh, every single month. And the business opportunities here are fantastic. Here is a, an analysis that projects that just in the residential sector alone, this is going to be uh, more than a $70 billion market within less than 10 years. Very exciting. Barclays, another one of the leading banks in the world, has done a very thoughtful analysis and concluded that the combination, again, the combination of solar electricity generation and efficient, cost-effective energy storage. You put those two things together, it changes everything. In their analysis, they believe that uh, it, it could completely change the electric power business over the coming decade. Now, it's an interesting thing that some of the electric power utilities are resisting this and are trying to slow down this revolution but the people are having none of it. I, I don't want to put everybody uh, in the electric utility business in that uh, same category. Um, the, the head of uh, NRG, uh, David Crane, uh, is an example of a, a CEO who wants to get out in front and help lead this revolution, even though uh, his business is in the old electricity generating business. That is an attitude that I, I really respect tremendously. On the other hand, there are electric utilities now who, along with uh, uh, coal uh, producers and oil producers, are actually using lobbying and campaign finance uh, contributions to try to persuade state legislators in the U.S. and policymakers in uh, countries around the world to put up barriers to try to stop this revolution. For example, uh, in quite a few states, they, their allies have introduced measures to put taxes on any homeowner who installs a solar panel on his or her roof. Well, that's not going down <laughs> too well. Matter of fact, uh, one example of the resistance that's uh, rising up to this, in Atlanta, Georgia, the Georgia Tea Party didn't like that uh, at all, understandably, and they ended up joining forces with the Sierra Club to form a new organization called the Green Tea Party, and they defeated that legislation in the Georgia State Legislature. And in fact, in states all over the United States, we have seen failure after failure when these carbon polluters and their ideological allies try to hold up this revolution that comes from the combination of solar electricity uh, and cheap and affordable uh, energy storage. Here's another uh, one of the large uh, financial uh, giants analyzing this. Energy storage combined with solar power could disrupt utilities in the U.S. and Europe to the extent that customers do what I was referring to earlier and move off-grid, just like uh, uh, so many young people have stopped using the landline telephones, I mentioned this earlier, and gone solely to the mobile phones, we're now seeing the beginnings of this 
revolution in the electricity marketplace. Now, it matters a lot how the regulations are written and how this transition uh, is managed. It's really important uh, to do it smoothly and well, but we have to do it quickly. And now that the price of solar electricity plus energy storage uh, is down at such a low level, uh, we're seeing it happen very quickly. Now here's another implication. Just as uh, you will often hear people in the past say, you would hear them uh, say, well, we just need affordable batteries. Well, now we're getting affordable batteries. Another thing that we've commonly heard is, well, what about natural gas? Because uh, uh, maybe that could be a kind of a bridge uh, to the future. But the problem is a lot of the methane, which is natural gas, that leaks during the fracking process and during the, the whole uh, production and distribution process, when that methane leaks, it more than wipes out any advantage that gas has over coal, according to many of the best analyses that have been performed, not to mention some of the other environmental problems related to fracking. But the cost of gas, in the U.S. at least, has come way down. But look at this implication. Again, this is not uh, an environmental organization <laughs> making this uh, uh, analysis. This is city. Uh, Citibank, Citigroup, and they're saying that the potential loser in this transition is gas because as solar continues to come down in cost and battery storage comes down in cost, again, the combination of those two together can disrupt the gas market as well as the dirty coal uh, and dirty oil industries. So again, the marketplace for the new technologies, these new technologies should not be seen simply in terms of the threat they pose to old, outdated business models from the past. We ought to be moving into the future with excitement and joy, with an eye to taking advantage of all the great jobs that are gonna be created. Look at the size of this market. Uh, we have, have seen, all, that, that it's gonna grow in the U.S. according to the Department of Energy 10 times over, from five billion a few years ago to 50 billion just a few years from now. That means more business opportunities, more jobs, more good paying jobs. So this is uh, an opportunity. And over a 10 year period, we could see this enormous opportunity grow both uh, in the United States and in each individual country, and on a global basis, it could be a, a, a trillion dollar global economic benefit. So that's why a lot of people are so excited about this uh, reason for hope. And if you look at the business revenue projections for utility scale, affordable energy storage, look at how quickly uh, it is already growing and how it is projected to grow. This is a reason for hope. This is a reason for excitement. This is a reason for feeling great about this transition instead of saying, oh, do we have to do it? It's gonna be so hard. Hey, this is very, very exciting stuff. Uh, and and we, we need to seize these opportunities because now is the time when we have to move more quickly. We're going to win this. No one listening and watching should have any doubt about the fact that we are going to solve the climate crisis. In the last hour, I talked about the two questions, do we have to do this and can we do this? Really, at the end of the day, it comes down to one question. Whenever a choice about the future is resolved into a choice between what's right and what's wrong, the outcome is foreordained because of who we are as human beings. We have the potential to get off on the wrong track and get distracted and do all kinds of awful things. But we have the greater potential to rise above our limitations and when we know what's right, to do the right thing. That's why we've been winning the civil rights revolution. That's why we have been winning equality uh, and justice without regard to sexual preference or, or gender. That's why we've made every great movement in the right direction in the history 
of our civilization. And now is the time once again. And that is another reason for hope.